Hello and welcome to another episode of Barrel Banter, a show where we gather around after a long day's work, have a sip or two of whiskey, discuss it, and uh, anything else that kind of comes to mind. My name's Chris. I'm Craig. I'm John. And I'm Caleb. What do we got today, John? Uh, we got small roses. Small roses. Small <laughs> roses. <laughs> small roses, right. Four roses, small batch. Four roses. You would small think batch. I was drinking already. <laughs> So tell me, Four Roses, I've actually, um, I've only heard of the limited edition um, single barrel stuff that they do. Yeah, and they, they actually do release, you know, a handful of other limited stuff as well. But um, this is one I believe they release all the time. Yeah. And I've always wanted to try it. I've read a lot about it on blogs, had friends recommend it to me. And it seems to rate fairly well, especially for the price point. It runs like 30, 35 bucks a bottle, which is really good for what is, you know, reported to be a <laughs> higher end bourbon. Okay. Yeah, I've heard uh, nothing but good things about this. And at a $35 price point, that's, yeah. That's kind of a, you know, it could be a crapshoot. Mm -hmm. So I am taking a cue from our last episode that we did, and I'm foregoing the ice cubes in favor of a couple drops of uh, some filtered chilled water. Just to help uh, open it up a little bit. Just a little bit. So what are you guys smelling right off the bat? Well, I got big vanilla when we pour, even when we poured it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, big, I can big, smell it from here. Big oaky vanilla. Trying to let it open up a little bit more. It's stinging the nostrils. It's spicy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lots of vanilla, a little, little caramel. They are the spiciness. They are known for a um, large percentage of rye in their bourbons. Uh -huh. I do like that. So what did, what did we say this is? What proof is this? Uh, 90. 90 proof? Mm -hmm. So what was, do we remember what the larceny was? Was it 92? I think I it was 92. So. It was up there. That one, that one had yeah. a, lot of, a lot of heat to it. Yeah, this has got a lot less heat. Well, that's, especially uh, when you add a dash of water to it, it really. Yeah, you know, without the water, there's definitely some heat to it. Some little. It opens it up and changes it quite bit. a bit. I start to get a lot of uh, fruity kind of flavors to yeah. it. Yeah, you can kind of smell the fruitiness mm -hmm. a little bit off the front. I don't smell it so much anymore, but yeah. the initial whiff mm -hmm. was kind of no, there. I'm still getting a nice fruity. I am, I think it's kind of going along with what you're saying. It's, it's, um, I immediately get uh, the fruitiness, like mm -hmm. the berry, the berryness. And also while I drink it, I, I get that, that scent of it as well. But it's like right on the front end. Right. For me at least. And I gotta say, I am surprised at how smooth this yeah, is. Yeah, this is very is really smooth. smooth. This is like silk. Especially for the price point. I was, I was reading a little bit about them too, and their minimum aging is five years, which is uh, longer than required. Really? What's typical? Typical Three is years? four. Okay. If it's less, or if it's, it has to be at least two to be bourbon. Mm -hmm. right. If it's less than four, it has to state it. And if it's over four, it's optional to state or not state. Interesting. And, um, it's, it's drier. A little, little, little smokiness, but really it's like, it's just creamy. It's really... Yeah, creamy, mellow. It's got a nice, you know, creamy, very complex. I think more complex than the other ones we've had. I would agree with that, yeah. Totally, yeah. There's Great a lot balance. more happening mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Yeah, balance is a good way to put it, because there's a lot of stuff happening, but nothing really particularly overpowers the rest no. of it. It's kind of evenly in there. Very well balanced. Some of the other things I was reading is they use, they have five different yeast strains that they use. I think wow. it was five. Hmm. And so they can control the flavors by which yeast strains they use, and then how they blend it. No, they create this using 
four different specific recipes, recipes. right? Mm -hmm. And they blend them to create this small yeah. batch. That's very interesting. Which doesn't mean that it's a blended whiskey, because that's a whole different kettle of fish. No. Mm. If, it act if it says blended whiskey, that means they add caramel coloring, they add raw alcohol. Oh, really? Oh. They can, yeah. They can add a number of things that you don't really want to drink. Hmm. There you go. Learn something new every day. Yep. So as we sip on this a little bit, um, I think the topic for today is going to revolve around uh, digital marketing, um, specifically Facebook, and how that has just taken the world by storm, especially the the advertising world. Um, you know, as as print continues to um, unfortunately die off, the the digital realm is taking place with that, and Facebook is kind of leading the charge. Would you not agree with that? Yeah, totally. So interesting about interesting thing about Facebook. Uh, I started doing it back in 08 or so, and back then it was more set up in a chronological format where basically the most recent thing is posted up first. Mm -hmm. I think we all kind of remember back then and that's how it was. Right. And now they kind of moved away from that. But the cool thing about back then and why it was so effective back then uh, was because as a company, you can create a page, create content, push it out there, mm -hmm. and have your your followers see that without really having to pay anything. So it's all free marketing. And it was almost one-to-one. Yeah, it was it was really effective. So how Facebook makes some of their money is they have what they call boosted posts, where as a page manager you can pay, uh, you know, some money to essentially expand your reach. So let's say you have five thousand likes on Facebook. Normally, organically, you might get seventy-five to a hundred interactions or people that actually see it. But you can toss like five bucks, ten bucks, a hundred bucks, and as the more you, money you put into it, the more reach you get. Mm. So it's kind of pay to play type of situation there, which is a bad thing overall because it used to be free. But when you compare it to the rates that everyone else is uh, charging, for example, Google or um, LinkedIn, for example, mm. Mm. what you're paying is pennies on the dollar compared to the results that you get. Right. Yeah. So. It's also very interesting because you can get very targeted with your audience. So in addition to being super cheap, you can kind of, you know, funnel down to the exact audience from age, gender, uh, all the way down to geolocation. So you can specify, I want people from this zip code to see this content. Mm -hmm. Maybe for a small business running within a certain limited area, you can set it to, okay, only people in this city can see my stuff. So you don't spend money elsewhere. So it's very refined. You're know, very specific, so you don't waste a whole lot of money. So what is the best bang for your buck? If you're going to go out and start advertising on Facebook and start putting some money behind it, what type of media, what type of content is, is best for Facebook? From what we've discovered is uh, video actually is a lot more receptive than all the other uh, types of content you can put out there. Uh, most recently for one of our clients, we actually had a meeting today uh, going over some of the social media posts on their page, we compared a blog post with three images, a single post that was also a contest, uh, and a video post. And between the three, we spent about $35 over a seven day run for each post. And video, actually, we gained the most engagement out of it. So we had over 8,000 impressions, where they call it reach. So anytime someone even catches a glimpse of it, that's considered an impression or reach. So 8,000 for that versus 1,500 to 2,000 for the other posts. It's been the same exact amount of money. Mm, wow. And in terms of video views, we got 4,700 out of, out of the 8,000 that actually uh, sat around and watched it. That's pretty good. So another thing that I'd like to mention is, um, especially with the whole digital advertising growing more and more prevalent, especially with social media platforms, is knowing the audience that's on the different social platforms. Now, you know, Mike might be on Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat, but Mike uses Facebook differently than he'll use Instagram and Snapchat. Right. So knowing how people use the platforms is also super beneficial to generating the content to begin with. 
Right, a good example of that is, um, I know a lot of people, if they're looking at apparel or bands, will stick to Instagram, or if they're looking mm -hmm. for some other type of small business and they want to learn more about the business, they go on Facebook. Right, and they're gonna, they're gonna, um, they're going to interact with the content differently. Mm. For example, Facebook is notorious for users not clicking on a video to initialize the audio. So you want everything to be really attention grabbing out of the gate. And they've even also implemented this new feature where they are automatically captioning yeah. the videos now. Interesting. Um, and I've also noticed that YouTube is doing that as well. So um, knowing type, you know, certain stuff like that, like the Instagram audience is a little bit more receptive to actually clicking on the audio, mm -hmm. um, spending a little bit more time, you know, in individual posts right they're there to look at things right mm -hmm. exactly they're there yeah so um, you know just kind of knowing where you're posting and um, kind of crafting the content to, yeah. and the when platform. yeah exactly There's certain times a day where mm -hmm. whether it's Instagram or Facebook wherever people are a lot more likely to click on the audio like during lunch time yeah. after work or right. during normal business hours forget it. They may look at it, but they're not going to turn on no. the sound because they're sitting at their desk. Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah. Well, um, before we wrap it up, any final thoughts on uh, Four Roses? Mm. I could drink this all yeah. day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I haven't at found least a bourbon all over <laughs> that I don't like yet, really. Well, yeah. except for like, you know, well drinks or whatever, but mm -hmm. yeah. this works. Yeah, I know. It's got, it's got a nice, long finish. Yeah. Well, yep. just really, <coughs> it does. Carries on. It's got a nice taste. Nice. It just sits with you. So far, of the ones we've had, this is I think probably my favorite. Yeah, I would have to agree, agree with that for sure. Yeah, it's definitely the most complex. Yeah, it's got the complexity and a smoothness. <clears throat> That's really what's got me like excited about this: is the smoothness of it. Now that I've yeah. discovered it, I'm. I may have to swap out my Larceny bottle at home for a bottle of Four Roses. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, this needs to go in my cabinet at home. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thanks again for joining us for another episode of Barrel Banter, and we will check you next week. Cheers. 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 Small Roses. Small Roses. Little Baby Roses.